Hello everyone and welcome back to Aero Military Collectibles. Uh, as you've seen in previous videos to this, I, I did manage to get to the UK for a surprise visit. And this gentleman was putting me up, Danny Reese, Herefordshire, Hi, Hi, Red, Herefordshire Regimental Museum, you might know him from on YouTube. Um, he has a fantastic SAS collection and we've literally put a fraction of this on, on a table to have a quick look at. Um, it covers everything from Cold War, Northern Ireland, into some conflicts that are lesser known. Um, so we'll just do, we'll get Danny and we'll just literally go from uh, left to right and we'll uh, do a, or sorry, right to left, and we'll do a, a quick preview of what we have here and we'll bring stuff close to the camera so you can have a look at it. Excellent, hi everyone. Well moving from left, our first mannequin on the left here is wearing possibly one of the rarest pieces of DPM you'll find on the collector's market and that is the 63 pattern SAS smock. When you first look at this you think it's exactly the same as the World War II windproof and it is, you can tell by the cut of the pockets and the actual way the construction of it is but it is in the early DPM. Now the main army itself didn't get DPM until the famous 68 pattern but the SAS had already been trialling it earlier on but you can see it's a fantastic construction with a full length zip and hood. These were worn quite common in the Dauphin, but they were known as an alley piece of kit. So these were worn well into the 70s, and you can tell the old and bold when they were still cutting around in their 63 pattern. Working down, we've got quite a strange piece of metal lying in front of it, and that is the original tailgate board. That is the original tailgate board of one of the legendary Pink Panther Land Rovers. This Land Rover, 10FG33, as you can see, served originally in the Dauphin for its pink paint, but has later served in Northwest Europe and Northern Ireland because it's still got its green and a bit of black nasty to cover this number plate when it's doing some sneaky beaky stuff. That is a rare survivor of an original Pink Panther. Moving down, John's now going to be picking up a Sun Compass. Now these were all fitted to the Pink Panthers, and this is again a, a rare example of a Howard Pattern Sun Compass. Again in the desert you've got a non-featured uh, environment, so you're relying purely on the sun and the stars to navigate. Now, those of you who are webbing collectors will be seeing this and getting a bit excited. This is basically a copy of the World War II auxiliary pouches, but in the 72 pattern canvas. The SES loved this bit of kit. You can fill it up with mortar rounds, L4 Bren mags, you get a backpack section as well, and they were worn from the Dauphin well up into the first Gulf War. As you can see, this example has got a shed load of paint that's rammed all over yeah. it. There you go. This is actually dated here on the inside, 1982. Brilliant. Then obviously we have the famous SAS Beret. The staple belt. Now I'm going to bring this closer to the camera because this is very, very interesting. So Danny's going to talk about this just while I'm holding it in front of the camera. That there is a plaque of an Argentinian 105 field artillery or pack howitzer that was captured during the Falklands War. Obviously, everyone likes a bit of booty to bring home, and that was brought home after the Falklands. This is one for steel helmet stand. <laughs> yeah. If you can look barely here, you can make it out is the SAS logo. Um, this is very, very rare as well. We believe, and this hasn't been proven, we're looking into the archives. When the regiment was reformed in the 50s, and it was over actually over in Malvern rather than its, its home here now in Hereford. And we believe these helmets were produced originally for the early guard details or a parade in the early 50s. So again, this information is not confirmed because again, the regiment don't like wearing helmets at their best of times. But this steel helmet is obviously its original piece and it's come from the original source. So if anyone's got any ideas out there, give us a shout. And then we have the famous Fairboard Sykes. I nearly just stabbed myself. <laughs> this is Mark III. This is a Mark III. This is a wartime produced blade. So as you can see, it's a machine ground, well it's a hammered blade, sorry, this is a hammered blade one I picked up. So you've got small diamonds at the top, so this is a hammered blade. The later ones were a machine blade. This is from a, a wartime manufacturer that were reissued in the 60s under an Admiralty contact. Hence it's got this FR693 and the scabbard FR271. Now these were 
redone in the 1960s for an Admiralty pattern. I'm sure that Mark's there while you're talking. But were issued also to the SAS. And then on the scabbard, there's the mark in there. Just something to look out for though if you come across a third pattern. So these are very unusual. So what have we here, Daddy? The first one here, this is actually an Omani Special Forces shirt, or so Omani Army shirt, which is used by their Special Forces. The SES are highly trained and they're sought after by every Special Forces in the world to assist with their training. Especially the Omanis, there's a great um, camaraderie between the Omani Special Forces and the SES. And this particular chap obviously served in the SES as a corporal, or he's been over there and promoted up the upper ranks, but he's also served with the Sultan of Iran Special Forces, hence he's got the Sultan's wings as well as his SES shoulder titles. And we have a similar... Yep. Some of you Cold War warriors remember this one. This is a tropical shirt as worn in Borneo and near the jungles. This particular chap's obviously, he's not obviously deep in Borneo, he's probably more in a training role, but he's wearing his wings and he's in the Americans' jumps course. Interesting with this one, on Velcro. And this would have been in the 70s? 70s, 80s. So, like, when you think of it, everyone knows the Velcro now, but they were still doing it back then. Like. Yeah, back like to Vietnam. Yeah. So, you want to point out the stuff here at this side? This mannequin here, I think some of you now are screaming going, why is an RAF regiment uniform here? They know they're not doing the five mile of death. The SAS does not recruit solely from the army. It recruits from all the services. This chap is an RAF regiment flight lieutenant. He's gone into the regiment, he's passed his selection, and he's got his wings proudly on his shoulder. On formal parades, which they hate doing anyway, they would wear their original uniforms. So you'd find guys wearing their number two from the army, their navy ratings uniforms. Members of the RAF would wear their RAF number ones, but they'd all wear their wings. I have seen an example in another private collection, a chap who's an RAF regiment, so he's got his RAF number twos, with his shoulder title, but he's wearing the blue corporal stripes and his wings, because the rank is specifically for the regiment. Okay. So if you went back to units, it was RTU'd, yeah. He would lose that, but this chap's obviously come come over. He's probably been promoted since he joined the regiment, but he's still wearing an RAF equivalent rank. So that's quite an interesting one. So it's always worth checking uniforms, just check the shoulders and check the stitching. Because this chap obviously has gone from the RAF regiment to, and he's also got the General Service Medal there. From this area, it's going to be Northern Ireland with the Northern Ireland clasp. And then we've got some final little items here before we go to the women in the front. Yep. One there is the altimeter. The regiments are well known for doing their halo jumps and parachute jumping, and this altimeter would have been worn on the wrist so you know when to deploy your chute. And we're just under a thousand feet, he says. <laughs> and I'll pass this one over to John because he is our in house expert on this particular, where this particular rig um, would have been worn. So, this is a Northern Ireland issue for clandestine operations in Northern Ireland. Um, shoulder holster. In this case it's, it's uh, Browning that's in it. Hype. So this was given to regiment, date, guys that were acting clandestinely around Northern Ireland and on the inside here is actually a little clip that you'd see on a, a pair of braces that they would actually brace to their belt. So that's it, wear their jacket over it and you go away do your sneaky stuff and if you really need to you can withdraw your pistol. Um, we know who this one came from, who did serve in Northern Ireland. Um, we just can't, I'm not going to mention names, obviously, on YouTube. But yeah, so that's what that is. It's a little covert shoulder holster. And as you can see, the way it is fitted, it, it, it won't print um, on the outside of the clothes. So when a guy has a jacket over this, you'll, you'll, you'll hardly know that he'll be wearing it. So yeah, so that's what that is. Northern Ireland covert chest rig, or uh, shoulder holster. Interesting one about that as well, obviously we can't give any names and details away, but this chap, to show you the, 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 the variety of backgrounds these chaps come from, the chap who wore this was in the regiment for, uh, he was over 15 years, he originally joined the Royal Navy as a chef. He did his Royal Navy chef's course, probably the hardest course to pass in the armed forces, chef's course, nobody's passed it. <laughs> <laughs> he 
joined the Royal Navy Chef, then one day fancied, I fancy a bit of that, and went for selection and he passed. He served well into the regiment, serving in the Omar and Northern Ireland, Dofar, obviously Northern Ireland, the Dofar and stuff. Really nice chap. We miss him because he passed away only recently, but a really lovely chap. And he also did the SBS Divers course. Well, yes, you actually have some of that. I stuff. have some of his SBS bits as well, yeah. which which we'll cover in another later video. So just here at Denny's feet, we're going to hold it up. If yep. any of you remember, or if any of you know, I, I don't think I've done a video on my one, but I will do a video, is the general the general service backpack that was a Pete Gucci, Gucci pit of kitchen in the 80s. This is an SAS equivalent, and you can actually tell by the material, it is completely different, it's nylon. Whereas the, um, the general service ones and the para ones are like a rubber, um, but yeah, it's, it's nearly like a, uh, it's like the Alice pack. Uh, yeah, it's nearly, yeah, it's like an Alice pack from Vietnam, and it's a lot bigger as well compared to a normal general service pack. But yeah, it's just another alley piece of kit, as they say. Um, then we have just I'm going to lift this because it's not attached. I think we have the 58 pattern, well, web set for an altimeter to be attached to a weapon. Um, I have seen these being used to carry prismatic compasses as well. Um, but yeah, so that's what that is. Um, obviously, your regular Joe Soap in the British forces at that time would not wear it as a drop down, so that was that sort of a giveaway that it's SAS or specially type uniform. We have the standard assault rifle of the time, the SLR. This is a full DA YouTube, so calm down. Um, it was, might as well be a paperweight, but we just put this up as a little set dressing. But we will probably do later on in the video. We'll do a couple of. Um, Pew Pews from his collection, from you, Danny's collection. You'll notice there's no sling on there, because at the end of the day, if you've got a sling, you're being lazy. And yeah. as all the regiment boys say, when I put a display on, get that sling off that rifle. Because if you've got a sling, you're being lazy. Yeah. And then here, we have a 50 year pattern web set, but it, as you can see, it's not like a standard web set. So if I move from uh, left to right, get yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every set is personal to the man, and this obviously this man, it's designed for light fighting. It's yeah. not got a lot of heavy kit on. So this is a. I, I, is that a Gucci? This is this is 44 pound compass pouch. Yeah. Which is obviously it's kept nice and tight. And normally, the principle is you want to survive to fight in your smock. Yeah. So you're going to have your compass, your escape invasion kit. For some reason, this chap you might have used it for something else more than likely. You'd keep your compass on you yeah. at the end of the day. Load yeah. that is again. It's, these are this is the specifically made for the regiment so escape and evasion pouch. It's a rubber lined pouch on a drop, on drop pouches, where you keep all your escape and evasion kit in uh, and a bit of food. Um, then, interesting, if you, if you just let it go a second, you see the two 44 pattern water bottles, right? Black top, silver top. Silver top is the earlier version, black top is the later version. So, if any of you pick up a 44 water bottle, that's a, a very, very quick way of telling whether it's early or late. Um, standard 44 pattern water bottles, covers, um, except obviously again on drop downs. Then over here we have, this is for SLR. Or is is that, is on, is oh yeah, so this is done for the Armalite, or the M1A1, or the M16A1, sorry, pardon me, um, that the SAS would have used at that time as well. You can get these in SLR version, and this, but this one is done for Armalite version, or what they call the Armalite. Yeah. An interesting Gucci fact about the Armalite, the SES were the first unit to use the, S uh, the S80, the M16 in an active service role. They even used it before the Americans did. Oh, did they? Yes, I did. Know that, no. And then here then, as well, just draped over the table, we have an uh, Oman flag that was brought back by another person that uh, Danny knows from the regiment uh, as a bring back. So yeah, so that's it. Just a quick overview of uh, Cold War era SAS uh, selection, collection. And selection, uh, collection, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So, if you like what we provide here at Area Military Collectibles, please like, please subscribe, and please tune in for the next video. And as always, at the top of the video description, there is an email if you want to get in contact with the channel. Thank you.